far back as I can remember, I always wanted to travel. To me, traveling was better than buying anything. Exploring mysterious places, tasting exotic food, meeting interesting new people. But being constantly on the move also makes it harder to stick to your habits and routines, like the ones I'm used to back home. Waking up around 8 in the morning, journaling, morning coffee, the morning walk before work, yoga at noon, my go-to high-protein lunch, going to the gym after work, post-workout meal, Netflix time, reading a book before bed, all gone once you're in a new environment. And I experienced this myself as I started traveling the world at the start of this year. We arrived in Bangkok and I noticed the first couple of weeks I was really struggling with finding my rhythm and usual routines. I had trouble staying productive, I was eating unhealthy, I was getting frustrated as my workouts were irregular and I slept poorly as I was lacking structure in my day. I flash forward a couple of weeks and was back on track with almost all of my routines and habits and I even formed some new habits that really improved my sleep, my focus and my productivity. The first thing I did to get my habits back on track is to set regular cues. Now if you have no idea what I'm talking about then you probably haven't written, haven't written, haven't read, haven't read James Clear's Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits by James Clear. Atomic Habits. Perhaps the most impactful and practical book I've ever read because in this book you learn that habits form in four stages. The cue, the craving, the response, and the reward. Cue, craving, response, reward. Cue, craving, response, reward. A cue can be something as simple as seeing a cookie on the kitchen counter. Seeing it triggers the second phase, the craving. A feeling of hunger or desire makes you want to eat the cookie. You respond by eating the cookie. And then three, four more cookies. The reward is the dopamine rush you get by indulging into the delicious cookie. All habits follow this four-phase process. And this is exactly why new environments mess up your habits. All your regular cues and triggers that you were used to have around you, all gone. You're now surrounded by a completely new environment. If you were used to eating an apple whenever you would have a craving for something sweet, that apple might not be there in your hotel room. Or maybe when you finish work and the closing of your laptop at around 5 in the afternoon would mean you would head out to the gym to get a workout done. But now that you're traveling, your working hours might be different, or maybe you're not working at all. If you've been chilling on the beach the whole day, then what is your trigger to go to the gym? If you don't have a daily stand-up at 8.30 every morning, then what is your trigger to not snooze your alarm every day? Here's a fun fact. It works the other way around as well. You see, in a new environment, it's also easier to get rid of your bad habits. Take me as an example. Absolute idiot that I was. I decided to start smoking 10 years ago. And I've tried multiple times to quit, but I would always fail, I would always come back to my addiction. That is until about 3 years ago when we moved houses and we decided that would be the perfect time to quit smoking. Because we were going to move to a new environment. All those old triggers of our old home, all gone. I haven't touched a cigarette ever since. Back to Bangkok. You see, because we were in Bangkok, a very hot and humid city, I didn't really want to go for morning walks. This meant I didn't get my morning light exposure to set my circadian rhythm that would usually help me fall asleep easier that night. So the first thing I did to fix my habits by setting regular cues is to still get my morning light exposure in, even without the morning walk. As soon as I would wake up, I would hit the swimming pool do a little bit of swimming and then sit in the sun for about 10 minutes. So the cue here is, as soon as I wake up, I head to the swimming pool to get light exposure, no matter the time I wake up. And by chance, this is also where I formed a new habit because swimming around a little bit to get my light exposure in eventually turned out into a 20 minute cardio session of me swimming around a lot and then getting my light exposure in. After that, I would hit the showers. Back home, this would mean cold showers. But since I'm in Bangkok, where it's 1 million degrees out here, the best I can do is lukewarm showers. There's no cold showers here. But I still wanted to have the cue. As soon as I take a shower, I put it on the coldest it can get. Cue is take a shower, make it as cold as possible. 
whatever that is. After that, I get dressed and I hit up a coffee place to get some work done. As soon as I open up my laptop, the first thing I open up is Notion to get some journaling done and to set the goals for the day. Cue here is open up laptop, open up Notion. Around noon, I would break my fast, either at the coffee place or eating back at the condo. Either case, the meal should be low carb and high in protein. Low carb or at least slow carb to avoid an energy crash after eating and high protein to maintain muscle mass. So I stopped eating delicious looking sandwiches and started eating my regular macro. Macros. Macros. Hey, yeah, send me that macros. Noon is the cue for breaking fast with a low carb, high protein meal. So after lunch, I continue working until around five, the usual time I would finish my full time job back home now again i use this time as a cue to stop working no matter what i head out to the gym in the beginning i really struggled with this as i set a goal for myself to publish at least two videos per week once i start traveling so i kept on working skipping workouts even working all-nighters just to get those two videos a week out guess what I didn't manage to get out two videos a week. I wasn't happy with the quality. Plus I stressed myself out and I just quickly realized it wasn't sustainable as it messed up my rhythm completely. It worked counterproductive. So to overcome this, I again applied something I learned from the book Atomic Habits. It taught me to focus on systems rather than goals. Because if your systems are successful, this will lead to you achieving your goals. For example, every Olympic athlete has the same goal, to win a gold medal, but only one can win and it's usually the one with the best systems set in place. It's the one that's scheduled out every single minute of his day, training, recovering, learning, improving his technique. So goals don't mean anything. It's your systems, your habits, your routines that eventually lead to you achieving your goals. So in my case, I changed the goals I set, publishing two videos per week while traveling, to do three hours of deep work before my first meal of the day, use the afternoon to focus on less important tasks every working day. And a simple way to translate all your goals into systems is as follows. Instead of writing down, I want to achieve X, you write down, I will do X at Y at Z, where X is a task, Y is a place, and Z is the time. So in my case, instead of I want to publish two videos, it's I will do three hours of deep work every morning of every working day. I want to stay as fit as possible while traveling becomes I will work out every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday at around 5 as soon as I close my laptop. Goals are overrated. And yes, that's my girlfriend's handwriting. Because mine looks like this. Goals are overrated and systems are underrated. As I said, this is a lesson I learned by reading Atomic Habits by James Clear. If you don't know whether this book is for you or whether you should buy it or read it and you just want to read a summary first or skim over some ideas and highlights of the book, then I would recommend checking out Short Form. Short Form makes the world's best guides to non-fiction books. They make like book summaries on steroids because their summaries contain deep analysis, the main takeaways of a book, but also interactive exercises and even discussions with the Short Form community. So you can get way more value out of a book after reading the book. Or the way I use it as well is before deciding what book to read next, I check out short form and skim over the ideas of a potential book I might want to read. I don't personally use short form as a replacement for reading a book, but to decide what book to read next and to integrate the ideas I've learned from reading a book way better. They cover thousands of nonfiction books ranging from self-development, productivity, lifestyle, health, and they keep adding books every single week. I've even read that eventually they want to summarize the whole world they want to summarize key highlights from every single podcast and documentary so it's definitely a platform to check out and since they wanted to sponsor this video they gave me a personal link to share with you guys giving you a five day free trial and a 20 percent discount if you use the shortform.com slash stevanovich link or click on it in the description moving on just like anything in your life, you need balance. Balance between sticking to your habits and just letting go. You cannot control every single thing around you. So just try to make the best out of the situation. That means if you don't have a cold shower, then take a lukewarm shower. If the new gym doesn't have a bench press, then use the Smith machine. Fucking hate that piece of shit. But hey, it's better than nothing, right? And if you don't have access to the gym at all while traveling, then fill your backpack with heavy stuff and do some push-ups. If you can't do a morning walk, do a morning swim. If you can't do a morning swim, do a morning stretching routine or whatever. The most important thing is to find the balance. Focus on the systems and the habits and not so much on the result and the goals. Since you probably won't grow your pecs as big as Arnold Schwarzenegger's pecs by doing some push-ups. So I'm coming day and night. Try to realize it's about maintaining that rhythm, maintaining your muscles, maintaining the habits 
because if you don't, you'll slowly start losing that rhythm, making it harder and harder to stick to your habits. Skipping one day in the gym won't hurt you. Skipping two days in the gym won't hurt you. But every time you skip the gym, it will make it harder to come back to the gym steadily again. Oh, by the way, this is what a day in my life looked like before traveling. And this is what a day in my life looked like while traveling. See you in the next video. Cheers.